Hi, I'm Chris, the owner of CREATE, and today I would like to talk a little bit about human factors in design. In a fast-paced world where product development cycles are getting shorter, companies do not have the time to go through lengthy and costly ergonomic research cycles. In this paradigm, it is crucial to consider human factors at the beginning of development where it can be done in a cost-effective way. Fast prototyping early in the design phase allows for testing on how devices interact with human autonomy. Clay, foam, paperboard and wooden models help to study and evaluate the user product symbiosis. Prototyping, observation and iteration are a must to create a user-centric design. But with the prevalence of ever more powerful 3D and presentation software, even designers are pressured to save time and take human factor shortcuts. While 3D software is a great tool to evaluate design, it cannot produce the tactile interaction of early prototyping. 3D should be blended with modeling and iteration to tweak applied human factors. When everything is done virtually, prototyping will only happen much later in the development, when it may be too costly or too late to make human factor related modifications. The counter argument is 3D printing. But in many ways, it is already too late in the design process as it does not have the same value as making multiple quick proof-of-concept prototypes. Don't understand me wrong. 3D printing is a valuable tool, but it should be complementing quick prototyping rather than replacing it. It needs to be noted that designers are not ergonomists or anthropologists. However, it is a designer's responsibility to apply human factor principles wherever possible. We must combine the vast collective of human factor and anthropological data available to us with prototyping, observation and iteration to design human-centric products that are safe to use, perform effectively, have optimized usability and create a positive user experience. The following are some examples from CREATE to show the importance of early human factor study. 20 years ago, CREATE started working on in-the-ear headsets and we quickly realized that human ears come in many shapes and sizes. There was substantial anthropological data available on ear sizes, but it was not detailed enough for the design of in-the-ear headsets. So we created a database of silicone ears that represent archetype ear models. This allows us to study prototypes and iterations on different representative ear types. Unlike most projects, every month's project that creates starts with a phone modeling phase. Normally, we use proof-of-concept models to support our concept proposals. But in handheld projects, we turn this upside down and the visualizations are there to support the models. Why? It is imperative that the client feels the human factors in combination with visual concepts, so that they can evaluate both comfort and appeal. When designing and engineering Omni, an omnidirectional treadmill that creates a more immersive VR experience, we realized that human factors were a challenge as the product needed to be safe for a wide group of users. Also, the Omni experience is at its coolest when you're playing physically active games. So we had to study how different directional forces are applied on the unit. So, it is important to understand that when people evaluate a product, they will judge it on both usability and appeal. Creating a gorgeous 3D rendering means nothing if everything beautiful does not follow proper human-centric thinking. And while designers are not ergonomists, it must become second nature to implement applied human factor principles through observation, prototyping and iteration. I hope you enjoyed this quick chat about human factors and please subscribe if you would like to stay in contact with our team. Thank you very much for taking the time.